Want to animate your screen or objects in CapCut? You need to understand keyframes. Don't worry, I'll explain it super simply. A keyframe marks the start or end of a change. It tells the program, at this point, I want this object to look like this. Then you add another keyframe later, with a different position, size, or effect, and CapCut creates the smooth animation between them. In this video, I'll show you how to use keyframes for screen, objects, text, audio, and even colors, all in a simple and clear way. First, I'll show you how to make a zoom in effect. So set yourself to the point where you want the video to start zooming in. Click on Transform Keyframe. This will check scale, position, and rotate. Then move forward on the timeline. Zoom the video using the scale and adjust the position so that you can see what you want. You can see that a new keyframe has been automatically added to your timeline. It contains information about how you change the scale and position. I'll also tell you how to adjust the zoom speed. If you want the video to zoom in faster, drag the keyframes closer together. If you want the video to zoom in slower, drag them further apart. Now I'm gonna show you a trick that I personally use quite often. Let's say you wanted to zoom in on a video to show something, and then you wanna to return to the original size. Go to the point on the timeline where you want the video to start returning to its original values and add a transform keyframe. Click on the first keyframe where you saved the original values. Once the keyframe turns blue, press Ctrl plus C to copy it. Then move along the timeline to the point where you want the video to return to its original size. Make sure the video is selected and press Ctrl plus V to paste the keyframe. This trick that I just taught you is very simple but effective, and I use it in almost every video. Now I'll show you this handy trick on how to move around a zoomed video. First of all, you need to have the video zoomed in so that it's not fully visible on the screen. At the point where you wanna start, add the transform keyframe. Also, move forward a little on the timeline and drag the video to the place where you wanna move the shot. I'll show you how to improve this animation so that your screen movement glides as smoothly as butter on a frying pan. First, click on the video and press Alt plus K. This will open the keyframe graphs. Okay, bro, that is cool, but what exactly are these keyframe graphs? Glad you asked. I actually have a video where I explain them in detail. Let me show you an example to make it easier to understand. Look at this car moving from left to right. It's still the same speed. Now, look at these cars below it. Each one will go at a different speed, but they both start and end at the same point. How do we apply this to the screen movement now? In the video, both the X and Y axes have changed, so we need to adjust them. Click on the X, and then on that curve line, and select Preset Curves and set it to Quad Ease. We need to do exactly the same thing on the Y axis to make this movement look as good as possible. This will cause the movement to be slower at the beginning and end and faster in the middle. Okay, now close these settings with Alt plus K and add one last little detail. Click on the video and press Alt plus G to create a compound clip. Then in the basic scroll down until you see motion blur, check it and change it to 20. Thanks to this, your video will naturally blur during movement and it will look smooth. Everything we've learned about moving the screen can be applied to objects. I'll show you how to practically do it on this good looking guy. We'll start by moving it from the right side to the left. First, I add an object to the timeline. I will move it to the right. Then I move to the place where I want the movement to start and add a transform keyframe. Move something between five and 10 keyframes forward. I'll press the right arrow seven times and move seven keyframes forward. Grab the object and move it to the other side, but be careful not to change the Y position. Click on an object on the timeline and press Alt plus K to display keyframe graphs. We only moved on the X axis, so we click on the X component. Click on the line that represents our movement, and then on Present Curves. It's about moving on the screen, so we'll choose, for example, Quadies. Before we move on, let me save your future sanity by showing you the two biggest mistakes people make with keyframes. Let's break it down in a simple example. First, I'll add a transform keyframe, move forward on the timeline, and move the object to the left side. Now I'll move forward again on the timeline and resize the object and change its position. Let's look at the result and tell what's wrong with this example. So the first problem is that the second keyframe only stores information about the position, which means if you change the scale at the third keyframe, that change will happen between the first keyframe where the scale value was stored and the third one because the second keyframe didn't have any scale value saved. The second problem is that you need to create pause between animations to make it look more natural. Let's fix it. I'll delete the third keyframe by clicking on it and pressing delete. You don't have to change anything in the second keyframe and move forward a little. Add a new keyframe where the information you wanna work with will be stored. Then move forward and make changes to the object. 
This time, the result looks much more natural. Let's talk about text. You can work with text just like you worked with objects. First, click on the text and add it with a small plus sign. Move forward a bit on the timeline. Then scroll down a little until you find the transform section and add transform keyframe. Return to the beginning of the text on the timeline and drag the text to the right, for example, so that the text disappears completely. Now play it and you have a super simple animation of text flying into your screen. Let's show one more short example. I'll add a new transform keyframe a little further in the text. This time I'll make the text smaller and drag it down, which will create an animation of the text shrinking and flying off the screen. I'll also show you how to create an easy fade out effect. Hold down Alt and drag the text to a new location to create a copy. Delete the last two keyframes. Scroll a little down until you find a blend section. Add blend keyframe. Move forward and change opacity to zero. Let's see the result. For me, the fade out happens too quickly. So I'll move the keyframes a little apart so that the fade out effect is slower. Next, I'll show you how to combine object and text animation. First, add an object and then transform keyframe. Go forward a little on the timeline and add another transform keyframe. Then go back to the beginning and drag the object below the screen. Now go to the text section. Add text. Place it on the line below the object. Go to the timeline a little bit behind the object animation and drag the text there so it starts there. Scroll down and add transform keyframe, move forward a little and add another. Now I'm gonna place the text next to my head and make it a little smaller. I'll go back to the first keyframe, make the text a little smaller and rotate the text in the direction it will fly. So, I have a great and simple combined animation ready. Now I'll show you how to lower the volume at one point in the video, so add volume or basic keyframe. Move forward a little and lower the volume as needed. Now move to the point where you want to restore the volume. Add another keyframe, move forward a bit and set the sound volume to the original. Next, I'll show you how you can change colors using keyframes, First click on Adjustment. Scroll down a little and find Saturation and add a keyframe. Move a little forward on the timeline and set the saturation to minus 50. This will create a smooth transition to black and white video. If you want to do it the opposite way, add a keyframe where saturation is set to minus 50, then move forward and add a new keyframe where you set the saturation to zero. If you want to adjust multiple elements, add an Adjust Keyframe and it will select everything below it. I'll move forward a little on the timeline. Now you can play around with it. For example, I'll set the exposure to four, the contrast to six. I'll also scroll all the way down and play around with the vignette a little bit, and we can see the result. This way you can use keyframes to adjust the color in videos or images. If you found this video helpful, you can support the channel by becoming a member or simply leaving a like and a comment. It really helps a lot. Thanks for watching and have a nice day.